Doing things a little differently today, I'm Buck Sanders with Jason Staples, and we're going to be talking about Marquise Williams in sort of a combination video podcast. And what we're the subject matter of the podcast, uh, video podcast, is the progression that Marquise Williams has made, beginning from his earliest experience with the UNC offense. And I've got Jason Staples on uh, to help me with that. Jason, welcome aboard. Marquise is a senior. You would expect the senior to, to show some progress uh, over his first couple of years as a quarterback. Yeah, and I think you definitely have. Uh, in particular, you could see when he first started, he had to get used to the whole system. Uh, you know, he, he had to get used to the, as you can see on the, on the video uh, that, that, that goes with this, you can see he's having to get used to the tempo for one. That's the number one thing right away when Fedora came uh, to Carolina. So he had to get used to the tempo of running things so quickly and, and emphasizing constantly being on. You don't get a chance to turn off between plays. And another thing you can see in, in, the, in this video progression is as, you, as you're a, a zone read uh, option at the quarterback position, you have to get used to the mesh position. So wh- that's where you're, you know, with the, with the running back, you're, you, you either uh, hand it off or you pull it and you're reading the defense there on, on what you're going to do. You can see some progression here on the video in, in terms of his comfort level with the mechanics of that and with how quickly, you know, as you go from uh, his sophomore year into the junior year and such, where he, he's making that read more quickly, you can start to see more of a comfort level involved in, in, uh, in the running game process. And, and initially, he was just really a running option. And, and, uh, and again, right here, you can see uh, against Boston College, you know, th- basically a, a standard quarterback draw, quarterback power type thing. That one was quarterback draw. But then you start to see him progress as a passer. Uh, and in particular with Eric Ebron, uh, he, he developed a real rapport and a real sense of, uh, of, of how, to, how to find him over the middle uh, and became a, a bit more accurate of a passer uh, over over time. He's he's still not what I would consider an accurate passer, um, you know, an, an especially accurate passer. But he has become more consistent than he was. And when his footwork is good, he he really throws the ball downfield well at this point. And he's starting to be able to challenge defenses uh, throwing down the field. You could see that uh, thrown to guys like uh, like Bug Howard and and uh, some of the others on the outside last year where he was able to to threaten teams, particularly late in the year, and you could see that against like Virginia and some of these other teams, where he was able to threaten teams with his arm down the field. So he, be, he became less one-dimensional uh, as he's, or he's become less one-dimensional as he's developed in this offense. Uh, so, you know, one thing that you could see last year, I think, that even though he developed as a player, even though he was more developed, and, and here you see uh, some of the... Uh, some of his ability outside the pocket against uh, Virginia. But, you know, you could see last year, even though I think he was a better player than he was before by a good bit, he was not able to to do quite the same stuff uh, in terms of having a comfort zone with the guys around him because he didn't have Ebron. He didn't have a guy that kept defenses from being able to double-team his wide receivers. He had to be more precise uh, and I think he did get better in that regard. Uh, but that's where, you know, even though you can see some development, he's not necessarily, you don't necessarily see it as easily on the field in terms of, you know, just basic stats and such when the guy's around. I mean, obviously the offensive line wasn't in the best situation last year without Ebron. There were some things that, that could improve uh, around him last year. And, and that, that really, uh, that really made a difference. So, uh, I think the the interesting thing is going to bring together some of the development that he's had over the over his career. Now, with some of the some of the improvement around him that I would expect to see with a little bit more mature offense this year. Now, of course, they don't have an Eric Ebron still. I mean, that's that's a a, a top ten NFL pick at, at the at the tight end position, and I've become more convinced that the tight end p- position is especially important in these spread offenses because of how much pressure it can put on the defense in terms of what you can do schematically. But, uh, but the one thing that has been constant with him throughout is how tough he is, how he's led 
how he's been a leader on the field throughout. He's been he's been a guy who has consistently stuck his stuck his head down and gotten tough yards when needed to in, in the running game. Uh, and here you see, you know, against uh, against Virginia Tech, a tremendous throw on the run to to Switzer on a drag. That's the sort of play that he can make. He can threaten you with his feet, and then make that kind of play downfield. It's it's uh, it, you know that's been there all along, but he's gotten more consistent with his ball location. And and here you see, that's a perfect example on on the tape. This this uh, uh, post pattern against Georgia Tech to Switzer, you saw that exact post pattern earlier in the tape from a year before, and he overthrew it by a mile. And, and all of a sudden, you can see the, the improvement in, in throwing the deep ball. I think that was probably the most evident place where there was improvement last year was he, when he threw that deep post, when he threw down the field to, to, the, uh, to some of the bigger receivers he was more accurate as long as his footwork was good, and that's that's something he needs to continue to improve. As long as his footwork was good, he was more accurate down the field last year. Uh, so, I think there's definitely been growth. Uh, the the place that I'd like to see him grow this year, and the place where I think he he stands to grow the most, is in his handling of the pocket, making sure that he's aware of what's around him, that he's on the right spots. In, in the pocket to throw from and that he gets through those progressions with his feet so that his footwork is is solid. So it's just a matter of, of, of cleaning up the footwork, getting a little more comfortable in the pocket, and I think that alleviates some of the inconsistency that was still there a little bit last year. And then you get to be a more consistent player instead of just uh instead of at this point a very good player who has had some inconsistency as a passer, particularly down the field. Now it's just about cleaning up some of that footwork and getting more comfortable in the pocket to, to really complete the package. It'll be interesting to see what, over the course of this year. Thanks, Jason. Good stuff. Appreciate it. This has been Buck Sanders with Jason Staples discussing Marquise Williams. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again soon.